Earlier today, Unity announced their new pricing changes going forward, and a lot of people started freaking out. So in this video, I want to break down what they actually announced, what those pricing changes are, and how they'll impact me and you going forward. First, right at the beginning, it says, effective January 1st, 2024, we will introduce a new Unity runtime fee that's based on game installs. And this is kind of where people started freaking out. We'll get to it in a minute, though. It says, we will also add a cloud-based asset store Unity DevOps tools, and AI at runtime at no extra cost to Unity subscription plans this November. Now, I don't think anybody's upset about that second sentence. It's the first one where people are kind of up in arms and freaking out and worried and wondering, what does this mean? So let's go a little bit further. It says, as many of you know, the Unity engine is in fact two substantial software components, the Unity Editor and the Unity Runtime. The Unity Runtime is code that executes on the player devices and makes games with Unity work at scale with billions of monthly downloads. It's essentially the Unity Runtime is kind of like the .NET Runtime. It's the underlying thing that allows it to run on a bunch of devices or like the Java Runtime or anything else. And I think this is Again, why people are upset, because now there's a fee for installing that. But that fee is dependent on a couple of things that we'll, we'll talk about in just a moment. It says, we're, we're introducing a Unity runtime fee that's based upon each time a qualifying game is downloaded by an end user. We chose this because each time a game is downloaded, the Unity runtime is also installed. We also believe that an initial install-based fee allows creators to keep going on or keep the ongoing financial gains from player engagement, unlike a revenue share. So this is, again, the thing everybody is kind of talking about. Why not do a revenue share? What is this runtime? And why is there now a fee involved in it? And let's take a quick look at the details of it. And then I'm going to talk about why I think they've done this and why I think they may have done this instead of a revenue share. But first, let's see what those actual numbers are. So they've changed the threshold for revenue and installs, or they've changed the threshold for revenue and set a threshold for installs. So now with Unity Personal and Unity Plus, if you've got a game that's made over $200,000, and has at least 200,000 lifetime game installs, then you're gonna qualify for whatever this fee ends up being. It's, it's a little bit lower. And if you have Unity Pro, then games that have made over a million dollars and have over a million installs will also be applied to this. Now, my guess is that anybody who reaches the limit for Unity Plus or Unity Personal, well, I believe Plus is actually going away, will eventually just upgrade to Pro. So if you're on the free version or the Plus version and you get to this $200,000, my guess is that you'll just upgrade to Pro and it's gonna be a very minor change. It's not really gonna cost you anything, anything more than it would have cost you before. In fact, they've increased that limit from or 100,000 to 200,000. But if you're on Pro, it, it's definitely gonna change the way that things cost. Now, the reason I think everyone will switch to Pro or even more likely switch to Enterprise is this chart right here that shows the cost per install. If you're on the free version or the plus version, which again, pretty sure is just getting retired away, then you're paying 20 cents per install all the way up through no matter how many installs you have. So if you got a million installs, you can imagine this, this starts to add up pretty quick. You get 2 million and every install, it goes faster and faster and faster. If you've got Unity Pro though, you'll see that, you know, those second half or the 500,000 to 1 million installs cost one tenth of that. They're 0.2 or 2 cents per install. And if you go up to enterprise, they're even half that. And I think a lot of people think that the enterprise license is drastically more expensive than the pro one. It's not. It, it is more expensive, but if you're at the point where you're doing a million plus installs and a million dollars in sales, enterprise may be the right option because you're going to just save even more on the installs than at the pro. Of course, if you're not making over a million dollars in the last 12 months and having over a million installs life to date, then none of these numbers actually matter to you. The only number that really matters is the price for Unity Pro if you break this $200,000 limit. You break that, you're gonna wanna switch over to Pro, which bumps you up again to the $1 million. I feel like this right here is just kind of a, a nudge to get more people into their pro licenses and probably also to bring in a lot of people who have a free license but are doing things where they should be qualified for pro. And I'm guessing that this helps them track that and it's probably part of the reason that they went with this model. Now, I don't know why they exactly went with this model versus like a 5% rev share like Epic does, but when looking at the numbers, it seems to me that for a lot of people, 
the the rev share that they've got here versus the Epic one is actually drastically lowered. Now, that's not the case for everybody. There are definitely some people with um, very specific mobile scenarios and free-to-play things that are having that have potential possible issues here where they're going to have lots of installs and low revenue. I think that, again, in those scenarios, most of them can probably just upgrade to Pro. But if they're getting over a million dollars um, in revenue, but it's very low in profit somehow, and the install thresh, the installs is very high, I could see that possibly being an issue. But it seems to me that Unity is also looking to work with those people and try to figure that stuff out. I don't think that they're trying to bankrupt anybody you know, by taking more money than they're making or even taking a very significant percentage. It seems to me that they want to be under Epic's 5%, and this kind of allows them to do that. But uh, it's very hard to say exactly where this is going to end up. Now, I'm curious for everybody out here watching, where are you um, revenue-wise? Uh, does your company see this as an issue? Is this a, a big impactor that's going to you know, drastically change the way you do things? Or is this just going to be like, uh, now we need to upgrade to Enterprise or now we need to upgrade to Pro or now there's a, a small extra monthly bill in the grand scheme of things? Or is it one of those where hey, this is a giant disaster and it's going to shut things down for you now and you're going to switch engines and, and, and everything's terrible, terrible. I, I am personally in that, that first camp. I don't think it's going to have much of an impact at all on me. But I wonder, you know, I'm, I'm here for you guys. So I wonder if this has an impact on you. Let me know in the comments. Now, before I go, I did want to briefly talk about why I think they've done this. And I think that the answer is pretty obvious. They're trying to generate some more revenue and trying to spread out that revenue generation. I think doing a quick Google search popped up this chart showing uh, up to 2021 data, where a lot of their revenue is coming from the operate section, which was the uh, like services that they offer and stuff, the gaming services, ads and stuff, probably mostly ads. I don't really know the actual breakdown. And then a much smaller chunk, about a third of it was coming from the licenses of the engine and stuff, where I, I'm guessing that Epic is kind of flipped on that and they're mostly getting their money from the licensing of the engine. And they're, I think they're trying to get somewhere in that level where they're making a decent amount of money off the licensing of the engine, as well as the services to justify working on both of those and trying to come up with a solution that will make them a lot of cash, I guess, from the places that are making money without impacting the places that aren't. Although, again, there are definitely still some issues and still some people with some valid concerns that I'm sure will be addressed in the near future. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll, I'll see you later.